I have given this a lot of thought, but I want to read to you this chapter, this verse. Actually, it's just out of one verse. It's John chapter 10, verse 10, and everybody in here knows what it says. But since it's uh, time to read the Bible, I'm going to read it to you. So here we go, John chapter 10, verse 10. And I'm going to read that to you. I'll let you give you a minute to get there. Very familiar for you. It says this, The thief cometh, uh, not but for to steal and to kill and destroy. I am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundant. Okay. Now everybody here knows what he's talking about. You know, the devil, he has come to do three things. To steal, to kill, and to destroy. Jesus did one thing. He came to give you life and life more abundant. Is that right? That's what the scripture says. So, I want you to, I want you to understand that. As we go into what I want to say here this morning, I want to read you another scripture. It's in Matthew 25. So we'll run back over into Matthew chapter 25. And uh, I'm going to read you two verses out of that. It's Matthew 32, or Matthew 25, verses 32 and 33. And I'm saying this because I couldn't find anything else to refer to, so I had to start somewhere. So I want to use these two. Uh, Matthew 25, and look at verse 32 and 33. Are you ready? It says this. Well, let me back up to 31 since uh, that's easier. It says, When the Son of Man shall come in His glory, and all the holy angels with Him, then shall, the, then shall He sit upon the throne of His glory. And behold, and before Him shall be gathered all nations, and He shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth the sheep from the goats. And He shall <coughs> set the sheep on His right hand, but His goats on the left hand. Then shall the king say unto them on the right hand, Come, ye blessed of the Father, of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was in hunger, and he goes on, and he says a lot of stuff there. And then he talks about the goats and how he said, You know, you you never visited me in prison, you never came in, you never did nothing for me. And remember the end of that says, If you've done it unto the least of these, my brother, you've done it to me. So you need to read the whole chapter. I don't want to take the time to read it all. But the point I'm trying to make this morning is there's two things that we want to look at here. And I just want to look at it just like this. There's the right hand and the left hand. You got that? How many of you can see that every, everywhere there's an opposite? Everybody say opposite. There's always an opposite. There's a right hand and a left hand. And the Bible says that He's going to take those that are servants of God and He's going to put them on the right hand. Everybody say right hand. And He's going to take those that are rejecting Jesus, He's going to put them on the left hand, and He's going to separate the people. That's what He's going to do. And I want you to understand something. It's not my job to separate the people. It's God's own, it's God Almighty's job to separate the people. I'm going to read you Scripture and I'm going to explain to you some things that I see in Scripture. But I want you to understand something. I'm not your judge and your jury. I'm nothing. I'm just going to present the Word of God to you and God's going to judge you. Let me explain something to you. If you've never read the Bible, you need to read the book. You know why? Because God's going to judge you on this book. He's going to judge you based on this book. You need to know what this thing says, and you need to live by what this thing says, because God's going to come. One of these days, He's going to come, and He's going to say, listen, all the Bible says all nations were gathered before the great King, that is Jesus, and the Bible says that He judged them, and He's going to judge them based on this book. Not some crazy religion, not how good you were, how bad you were. He's going, to base, he's going to judge you on this book, whether you were born again or whether you weren't. See, the Bible says, Jesus said, He said, you must, everybody say must. You must be born again. He didn't give you an option to say, well, you, you know, I'll just... If you want to walk with God, you must be born again. Period. I, don't, I didn't say that. Jesus said that. And Jesus is the King of Kings. The Bible says that everything was created that was created was created by Him and for Him. Did you know you were created for Him? To walk with Him, to serve Him. And I want you to know Jesus loves you personally. That is awesome to me. He is in love with every human that's ever walked this planet. You understand that? Yes. He's not no respecter of persons. I don't care how black your past is. I don't care where you come from. God Almighty is able to save you and show you glory. Because He did it for me. How, you know, the Bible says, uh, the amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. You say, oh, you weren't near as bad as me. I don't care how bad you was. We as all sinners, and that's all that matters. Because you can have the blackest past in the West. But if you were a sinner, like I was a sinner, it doesn't make no difference. God just saves sinners. Yes. Isn't that awesome? That's 
Okay, he's got the right hand and the left hand. Now, I don't know how you feel about this, but I'm glad on being on that right hand. You know, when Jesus went to heaven and <clears throat> after his resurrection, and they stood there and they looked at him, and the angel came and they said, Why in the world are you both holding off into heaven? This same Jesus that just went up is coming back in like manner. But when he went up there, you know, the Bible says that he sat down on the right hand of the Father. And he's still sitting there right now. But in the process of Him said there, He sent back to us His Spirit to dwell in us, to lead us and guide us into all truth. There's the right hand and the left hand. I want to just talk about some things concerning this. And <clears throat> I actually wrote some notes for myself to remember some of this. The Bible says in Revelation 3 and 16, listen to what it says. You don't have to go here, just listen to what it says. So then, because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will do what? Spew you out of my mouth, Right? He says, because I have, I have a problem with this lukewarm, this mixture that you're walking in. The other morning, this is crazy, but I woke up in the middle of the night. It was like 2.30 in the morning. And I woke up, and you know what I was, you know what was going through my mind? I'll explain to you. In my mind, it was going through, uh, have you ever seen, I guess it's because I've been doing so much math. But I, I pictured a number line. How many of you know what a number line is? If you start with zero and you go right, everybody say that's positive. If you go left, that's negative. What does the devil do? He subtracts and divides. God adds and multiplies. And let me explain to you something. Zero is like the fence. How many of you know there's a lot of Christians that like to just walk in the middle and be zero? God says, no, no, no. And let me tell you something. In God's book, there is no zero. I'm going to tell you a little something else. There is no black and white. In, or there is no gray area with God. It's either black or it's white. It's either positive or negative, period. Mathematics is supernatural, I'll tell you. But let me tell you something. See, when you go to negative 1, and then you go on, on out to like negative 40, negative 40 is a smaller number than negative 1, but nonetheless, it's all left. See, you, you, you can, what I'm trying to say is, you, you can't be left. There's a plenty of words there to get what I'm trying to say. You can't be left. Because you know who gets left? The ones who do not believe in Jesus. They get left. Now I can talk about left for a long time here, but I'm going to talk about right for a minute. How many of you know that we are right? We're positive. Now I want to talk about positive and negative because that's where I started with this thought. We are positive. How many of you know God is absolutely positive? Now He is positive when you get born again because everything Jesus offers is positive. It will do you benefit. It will bless you. It will help you. It will prosper you. You'll, you'll find peace in that. How many, how many people out in the world right now, they live a life of either in drugs, alcohol, uh, you know, you, you name it. I mean, they fulfill all the lust of the flesh. You know why they do that? Because they're searching for something that will bring them peace. That's what this whole thing is about. It's called peace. Yeah. See, when people don't have peace, they have agony. Or they have fear. Or they have dread. But Jesus, have you noticed that every time Jesus came, when He appeared to His apostles, there in the, uh, the New Testament, just after He rose from the dead, the first thing He always said, He says, My peace I leave with you. Because the whole world is looking for peace. They're looking for something that will satisfy that thing down on the inside of them. Only Jesus can satisfy. Nothing else will work. You can search your whole life through and you'll never find anything that will help you. He is the Prince of Peace. He's the great King of Glory. He's not just the Prince of Peace anymore. He is the King of Peace. That's who He is. Who is that? Jesus, the Lord of Glory. You see, if you study history, everything, is circums everything is, rotates around Jesus. Because He's the great King. The Bible says, listen to this Bible. Listen to what the Bible says here in Romans 4 and 3. The Bible says, for what saith the Scripture? You need to read Romans 4. Abraham believed God. Ever say, I believe God. And it was counted to him for righteousness. It was counted to him to be right. And let me tell you something. When you, listen, listen. When you serve Jesus, you are right. You're positive, man. And your purpose in life is to add and to multiply. Your purpose in life is to have faith. Your purpose in life is to believe in Jesus. 